Hey, YouTube Rando here. This should be a pretty quick video. We hit up the flea market on the way home today. We were passing by and I had about 30 bucks in my pocket, so I just wanted to stop in. And uh, There's always one uh, vendor I always hit up because he has a cool little setup where he has bins, and this is your dollar bin, this is your two dollar bin, this is your five dollar bin. So everything in, in each bin, you know, and he's reasonably priced, so I hit him up every time and I did find some good finds. Uh, this is something I picked up a while back and I just forgot to put in on a video. I paid ten dollars for it. If you look them up on eBay, they're about twenty to twenty-five. And this one has a little bit of use. Those bolts have been used, and those bolts have been used, and then the main bolts been used. And uh, I think what that is is just they pulled one harmonic balancer with it. Uh, and this is a harmonic balancer puller, by the way, an installer. It'll it'll reverse and install it as well. So. I thought that was a good find for ten bucks. Uh, you know, I have one that's a really expensive one, and I don't like to loan it out. You know, some people, uh, can I borrow your blah blah? Well, this is what they're going to get loaned. They're not going to get my good set. So, I thought that was a decent find, though. Now the rest of this stuff all hit up out of one vendor. Uh, he has a and and it was all in one bin, and it was his two dollar bin. And I bought a, quite a few things from them. <clears throat> this is an older one I picked up off of them a while back that I thought was neat. It's a little uh, fish scale. It's a vintage skull fish scale. You can see it does your different weights. And it has a uh, tape measure on it as well so you can measure your fish and weigh them and make sure they're legal. And I don't remember if I got this from like the one dollar bin or two dollar bin, but I picked them up. I picked it up off of them a while back, and I just forgot what I paid for it. But I thought it was a neat little find. Now the rest of this stuff, uh, again, was all in one bin. I got a couple of these off of them. He had a round one and a square one. It's the little uh, magnetic tool trays when you're working on something and stick that on the hood somewhere you know it's got rubber on it so it don't scratch anything stick it on your hood or whatever and then you know it'll hold your bolts in place so you don't lose them I use those often because uh, I'm the world's worst about getting done with a job and not having enough bolts to go back in it because I done lost one somewhere and I have a huge bolt bin I have to go through uh, to find a matching bolt it's kind of a pain in the butt I got this off of them. Now, most people don't realize what this is. It's a 17 mil, 8 mil, 10 mil, uh, 5.5 mil, a 7 mil, and a 12 millimeter wrench. Uh, but these are made for RC cars. They're for nitros. You can put your glow plugs in right there and then, you know, put your uh, glow plug igniter on it to test your glow, pl glow plugs. That's to pull your glow plug. Uh, these will pull your uh, your your hub nuts on there. That just didn't sound right, but that's what they're called, I think. So yeah, this is a pretty cool little tool though, because you can use it for uh, like the eight millimeter will work on uh, battery terminals, stuff like that. So I thought it was a cool little multi tool. I picked it up. This is from Sin. They make the Genesis and Nemesis. Uh, monster trucks the 1-8 scale nitro monster trucks so I thought that was a cool little find two bucks now this most people aren't going to realize what it is right off the bat because I didn't either until I actually started to look inside it there's a little uh, connector right there and when you put your socket into here or your uh, ratchet rather 3-H drive ratchet when you stick it in there it contacts with that little circle down in there and then makes contact with the side wall and there's a little bitty LED light in there so when you stick your socket on there it's like a little flashlight till you get to your bolt you know what I mean cool little tool for two bucks it's made by Craftsman decent company not a great not a great tool company I don't usually buy Craftsman but I bought it anyway because it was only two dollars. Who knows what they cost? It's probably you know ten, fifteen bucks if you buy it from Craftsman. Now this I thought was going to be a good find, but I got it home and it, it is junk, pretty much. And I have one made by a 
who are they made by? Bar. Barlow. I have one that you just like it. It's just not Equistar. Equistar is a uh, a uh, plant that's uh, kind of local, but it's broke. The little spring in here is broke, so it don't spring back open like it's supposed to. But that's no big deal. Uh, I could probably get some use out of it somewhere. It's got a screwdriver. It's got a pair of scissors, a file, uh, two knives, flathead screwdriver. Uh, I wouldn't carry it just because it don't have a can opener and that's what I use most on my multi-tool. We don't have a can opener so I just use my little multi-tool can opener and it works. So, But for two bucks I wasn't going to pass it up just you know. It's a cheap one. It's China made but we'll put it to the test and see if it'll, it'll do anything if it's worth two bucks or not. If I'm out I'm only out two dollars so I'm not too bad. I picked up a couple of knives this week they were all in the two dollar bin so I picked them up this is a cheapo uh, Maxim and I thought it was going to be a decent find just I like the way the blade shaped but I thought it was carbon and when I got it home upon further inspection it is stainless it's, it's just a cheap stainless knife uh, I had just never heard of Maxim so I bought it and we sell knives I just never heard of the company and if you look on the back, it's probably not going to show up on the video. It says manufactured in China, but the national headquarters is in USA. Like, I give a shit where your national headquarters is. I just want to know where it's made. And China, China does make some decent knives. I mean, it, it, they're not the world's worst, you know. I would say Pakistan would probably be your worst knife you're going to buy. Uh... So I don't know why they would put even put USA on there. Just leave that off. But two bucks, I bought it. We'll use it as a utility knife or something. It'll be thrown in a toolbox or something, and we will use it. Uh, we'll sharpen it and see how well it holds an edge. The next two, I paid the same price for, and I've done reviews on them for Texas Blades already, and I've uh, been doing a little bit of restoring on them. This is the Klein Tools. Uh, it's a three blade configuration electrician knife electrician knife yeah and you can see it's got a little bit of wear and tear on it where it needs to be cleaned up but I'm not going to clean it up uh, I'm going to use it as a, a desk knife it's just going to be on my desk it looks nice I like the look of it uh, but I'm not going to use it because of the handles the handles are cheap plastic and uh, yes they did use plastic on vintage knives if they were just trying to spit them out as quick as they could this is like, uh, I want to say about 70s, something like that, late 70s, early 80s, somewhere in there. I thought it was a cool little knife for two bucks. Uh, the next one's a little bit more expensive knife, and we're gonna, we're actually going to restore this knife completely. And I've done a review on it uh, on Texas Blades as well, and it's the same, you know, three blade. It's the Stockman pattern configuration. Uh, it is a, hell, a western... Who makes it? Let me see if I can see. Uh, concave ground. I can already tell you it's on one of these blades somewhere, but it's concave ground makes them. And this is called the Western. It's a nice little knife. Has bone handles on it. <clears throat> nickel shield, nickel bolsters, all that good stuff. Uh, I thought it was a decent find for two dollars, and I even told the guy when I bought it. I told him I was like, these were expensive knives back in the day. You know, trying to let them know you have a, a vintage knife off in a uh, $2 bin. And, yeah, you know, kind of conversated with me about it for a minute and ended up selling to me for $2 anyway. So I wasn't going to leave it there and let somebody else pick it up. And I did feel like I kind of told them, you know, it's a vintage knife. It, you know, probably shouldn't be in a $2 pile. But I ended up picking it up off of and it was in really rough shape. Uh... There's a little bit of surface rust on it. This is carbon still. Uh, so it wasn't really rust. It was more like, you know, light pitting. Very light. So we cleaned it up a little bit. I'm going to leave the rest of that on there. Give it a nice patina. But we're going to tear this knife down and clean the inside of it really well. Uh, it's got a little bit of wear on this blade where it wiggles a little bit. So we're going to do a little bit of work on it. So that's it for this week, uh, YouTube. We... Like I said, we found some decent finds. 
and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, so 16, less than $20 for everything, uh, not including the harmonic balancer puller, but like I said, I didn't buy that this week, I bought it some time ago, or this, I didn't buy this uh, this week, I just happened to buy it from the same guys, I bought the rest of the stuff from them. So, hit up your flea markets, man. You'll find some good finds on tools, knives, all that good stuff. So, thanks for watching, YouTube.